Today you are going to learn how to begin knitting your very first toe up sock. For this tutorial, I am going to use a self striping sock yarn. This one in particular is Kama Sutra from Must Stash Yarn, and it comes in matching cakes. So this is a 50 gram cake and the other one is a 50 gram cake in case you wanted to do them two at a time. We will be doing one at a time toe up socks in this video using the magic loop technique. So I will be using these Chowgu Red Lace Circular Needles. They are 40 inches long. You could use a 32 inch needle. I prefer to use 40 just for the extra wiggle room. And the needles are the US one and a half size, which is 2.5 millimeters. To get started, we are going to do Judy's Magic Cast On. It looks a little bit fiddly and it's a little bit awkward the first couple times you do it, but once you get used to it, you will not want to go back to doing top-down socks. It saves you from having to graft the toe at the end and you can try your socks on your foot as you go up the foot, which is a really fantastic feature about toe-up socks. So to start off with, you're gonna take your strand of working yarn, the tail is on this side, the working yarn is on this side, and drape it over the needle that is farther away from you. Now, you can see that I'm pinching between my second and third fingers here, and I'm pinching between my thumb and my ring finger over here. What you're gonna do is use your second and third fingers to bring the yarn under both needles and over top of the one closest to you. Now you're gonna use your thumb and ring finger to go under both needles, over top of the one farther away from you. See how there's now two stitches here and one here? And you're gonna continue in that pivot motion towards you, second, third fingers over the close one, away from you, thumb and ring fingers over the far one, okay? So you can see, you just continue in this pivoting and over, pivot, over, pivot, over. And I'm going to continue because I'm making a child sock. I'm going to continue until I have cast on a total of 16 stitches. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So now I have my starting set of stitches here. Do not let your little tail get loose here. So you're going to hold your tail down and we're going to start working with the working yarn. Make sure you start working with the working yarn and not with your tail so that way you don't have trouble getting, you know, tangled up or you do your first row with your tail. So I knit continental style, so I'm going to get my yarn set up in my left hand. You still keep track of this tail, still keep pushing it down. You're going to take the needle on the right and slide it through. Okay, now you're going to get ready to knit. And this is what magic looping does. There's a loop on this side and there's a loop on this side. You've got these little bunny ears. So it allows you to knit across the needle and then use the cable to manipulate where the stitches are. So I'm gonna knit across the eight stitches on this needle, and this first stitch will secure my tail, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna knit across the first needle here, seven, eight. And then once you reach the end of your needle, this cable that's in here, you grab it at its source and you pull it through until the stitches are on the needle. So you're once again at the position like you were right after you cast on. You're gonna push this needle in and pull this one through. For this setup row, for Judy's Magic Cast On, the second half of the setup row, you need to knit the stitches through the back loop so they don't twist. So that means that instead of coming through the front loop here, the front half of the stitch, you're gonna go through the back half of the stitch. 
So I'm going to knit across these stitches. In this video, I am assuming that you have knit at least something before. If you have never knit anything before, I'm going to link my, it's called knitting for crocheters, but it could also be knitting for beginners. So you can learn how to knit before you do socks and understand a little bit of the terminology. So there you go. This is the end of Judy's Magic Cast On. You now have 16 stitches and you have a seamless start. So you can't see where your toe began. For this pattern, I prefer to do a knit front and back increase. I think it is the easiest way to increase for socks. You don't have to worry about lifting up stitches. And even though there's the little bump, I, it does not bother me. So you're going to knit one and then knit in the front. Do not take the stitch off the needle and knit in the back of that same stitch before it comes off. So you can see where you had one stitch, you now have two. Knit all the way to the end of your needle, like so, until you have two stitches left. Knit front and back again. Knit the last stitch. And then you're gonna do your magic loop jump. And drop it, the stitches that are on the cable, just pull the cable through. Then you rotate, push the new needle in, pull the old one out. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna knit the first stitch. And with magic looping, if you get a little bit of a ladder, a little bit of a line here, just give it a tug. Knit front and back. Give it a little tug and then all the way across to the last two stitches. There's my last two. Knit front and back, and knit. So you have now completed your first set of increases. Ta-da! So this is a kid's sock. I now have 18 stitches on the needle instead of Actually, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I now have 20 stitches on my needle instead of 16. Each increase row will add four stitches to your total count. Because you have one, two, three, four increase spots. I'm going to work the increase round three more times before we carry on. So now you can see I have worked my increases a total of four times. The way you can easily count them is by counting these little bumps that are created by the knit front and back. So you have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I've worked these increases every row four times. Now I'm going to begin alternating rows. So what that means is I'm going to work one row where I increase as we've been doing. And then I'm going to work one row where I just knit every single stitch and do not increase at all. So I'm going to work my increase row like this, knit front and back. And you can see that the striping has already begun to change, which is fun because it can help you keep track of rows sometimes. So I'm going to work my increase row here all the way across to my last two stitches like so. Increase, knit one, turn, and the second half. In magic looping, you will often see needles referred to as needle one and needle two. So what I just worked is what you would call needle one because it's the first half of the sock. And what I'm going to work now is usually referred to as needle two. So it would say needle one and explain how to do the increases in a written pattern and then needle two and explain what you should do on this second needle. One of the reasons for that is it's very, very easy to split up a sock pattern between the instep, which is the part that goes on the top of your foot, and the sole of a sock, which is what goes on the bottom of the foot. So there we go, I've finished my increase round. And now I'll begin with working just a plain knitted round. If you are having trouble differentiating between the front and the back of your sock, an easy way to take um, to demark it is to take the tail that you cast on with and pull it out 
and just let it hang on the right. Every time you are at the beginning of a round, if you take it just from where it is and let it hang right out the side of the needle at the beginning of the round, every time you're going to start a new round, the tail will be on your right. So, for example, I'm knitting my even row. I go all the way across my even row like this. Now, suppose I'm getting to the end of the even row and maybe I'm knitting socks while I'm making dinner or maybe one of my kids needs something and I finish my project and or I get to the end of the row and I put it down. Okay, this is, you know, we see projects like this. Now you have to pick it up and you have to figure out where you are in your sock. Okay, so I picked it up. I can tell that I've just finished knitting here. So I'm gonna do my magic loop bit. I'm gonna pull the cable through and I'm gonna get the needle set up to knit. But now I want to know, is it the beginning of the round or am I finishing the second half of the sock? Well, I can look and see where my tail is. My tail is on my left, so I'm working across the second half of the sock. I'm working across the sole stitches. So I can pick it up and keep going. Do, 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 do. Working across the sole stitches. Now, I am going to continue alternating the round where I increase and the round where I don't until I have the total number of stitches that I want for my sock. For this sock, because I am making it for my four-year-old, I am going to increase until I have 48 stitches. I will put numbers in the caption box below to give you an idea of how many stitches you want to start with and how many stitches you want for the circumference of a sock. In general, you want to have about eight to nine stitches per inch to have a good tight sock. Um, if it is much looser than that, you're going to have pilling where the stitches rub together and the socks won't wear as long. Or if it's very tight, you can do tighter, but you will need more stitches and it will hurt your hands. So I'm gonna to continue to increase the rest of the toe and then I will come back to you and we'll pick it up and talk about knitting the foot. Now I'm at the point where I've completed all of the increases for the sock. Obviously this still looks very tiny because like I said, I am doing this sample sock for my four-year-old. So I have 24 stitches on this side, 24 on that side. I have a total of 48 stitches. I will have all of those numbers in the box below or I will also create a PDF. If you would like the PDF, you can download it on Ravelry. So from this point on, I am going to just knit straight up the sock. I'm going to knit every single stitch all the way around until I'm ready to work my heel. I'm going to also include numbers below how many inches shy of your foot length you want to stop for the heel. We'll give you a range of numbers so that way you can stop at the appropriate length for the person's foot that you are wearing, uh, making for. Socks are really, really customizable. And as you start to make them more, you will discover how long you like your socks, if you like them a little tighter, a little bit looser. This is all gonna be up to your preference. So this is the end of lesson one, you have your toe. What I want you to do before lesson two is I want you to knit your foot all the way up until the point where you are ready to turn the heel of your sock according to the number in the comment box below or in the PDF that you purchase. So we're going to be done with the entire foot before the next video starts. Thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you guys next time.